I hear you okay. Yeah, you sound good. Yeah, it's just that uh, I got my headphones on and then it's just playing in the speakers. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, do you need me to help you figure out how to do that? I, it's super easy. Uh, no, I, can you say something? Hello, hello? Okay, there. Okay, got cool. it. Nice. Uh, Sweet. So, how you doing, man? Good, good. I'm doing good. Uh, just a little background. I, uh, I, I just started, so I'm, uh, I'm, pr I'm pretty fresh. But I've been playing a lot of team games before. Okay. And, uh, you know, I tried some one v one like a month ago, and it's always given me a lot of stress. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I've just been listening to all your uh, uh, B two GM stuff and uh, trying to trying to get better but it's it's been uh, it's been a little rough <laughs> I'm not gonna lie yeah no um, for sure that's how it goes yeah I, I I find that um I'm never able to actually macro hard uh because most of the games uh, there's something that happens that they'll you know rush me or drop me or something mm -hmm. um and uh, I I do a lot of like AI um, games to just to get the build down but as soon as I jump into a game I'm like all over the place <laughs> yeah for sure uh, so the the real big thing that we'll probably be touching on a lot then is going to be making sure everything you're doing makes sense and ma if you don't realize something is wrong I'll try to help you realize that like where it's like oh I didn't realize that that needed to be done this way and I wasn't doing it that way before because in general uh, whenever you get it, whenever you do get attacked, this is actually like a super common problem for people that do the series. Is they, because the series has no emphasis at all on micro, they feel overwhelmed because they're like, oh my god, I'm getting attacked, and I don't know how to micro, and now it's becoming really hard, and I don't like you know this, it's, things just start becoming complicated. But what really is supposed to happen? What really should be happening is if your build is efficient, if it's like if it's flowing really smoothly. When someone attacks you, it feels like they aren't actually attacking you because you just stomp them because you have more, like a lot more. Uh, because there is, there is a, this is a real thing. Nobody that is in platinum or below can multitask. Nobody can. Everyone who tries doesn't. They, like for instance, if like you had, if you had to do like, uh, like push like let's say with your left hand and your right hand, you had to push a button every five seconds with either hand like it, 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 maybe they're not exactly at the same time maybe one's every like two and a half seconds and then one's every other two and a half seconds so every it's still every five seconds but like they're alternated with two and a half seconds so it's like you're pushing a button every two and a half seconds with your left and right finger essentially uh a lot of people when they try to micro while doing that kind of a thing they just stop pushing the buttons because they start tunnel visioning like microing their units instead and they don't really keep up with the requirements of what macro is. They never do it. And if you don't macro in StarCraft, you actually cannot win games. Like, period. Uh, you have to be able to... Like, there's two phases of the game. The first one is learning how to macro. And the second one is learning how to multitask. Which means you're ma not stopping your macro, but you're adding micro to that. And the only way you can do that is if macro is so smooth for you that you just feel super confident at it. Like, you're just like, oh, yeah. Don't even have to use my brain anymore. I can just do this without even thinking. Um, yeah, it definitely yeah. is not not that right now, and and playing the team games actually uh, screw me up a bit because my teammates are like, "Hey, man, you know, like you gotta you gotta uh, uh, control your your uh, your army, you know, like get to do this." And I'm like, "I'm trying to macro." Yeah, no, team, team <laughs> games are a little different, honestly. Team games require a little bit of a different flow of the game, only because if even if two players don't macro very well while they're attacking someone. If it's still a 2v1, like if they attack your teammate and they have two times the amount of shit that your teammate has, uh, there needs to be some type of micro there. Like, like yeah. it's a little different. So, uh, team games is like the, the only way you can really make team games feel like 1v1 is if you guys agree as a team to just like wall your base off. And you're like, all right, yeah, let's all just make a wall and let's just macro up and expand. And, and then once we have like two or three bases set up, then we'll start a moving towards their base uh, yeah i mean l lately i've just found that i really like the 1v1 stuff because just because uh i can really practice the macro sure so but uh but yeah i i got to a point where i could uh 
macro uh, you know playing against ai and it's i'm like oh yeah that looks pretty good like yeah, i yeah. i'm I, <laughs> I max out pretty fast okay and then as soon as i get into a game i'm like oh no it's okay. totally different for sure players actually like they do more way more things to distract you and it's way more annoying um all right so uh you had a did you have a replay you wanted to take a look at for yeah this? i actually have a, a bunch of replays uh you know i have one for you <laughs> Like they they all questions uh, and then one is just me macroing against the AI. I don't know if, which one you want to see or. I would say, uh, give me the one like give me one that represents like an average game for you versus a real player. Uh, AI is really easy. I, I feel like AI is like th this is this is probably the best way I can explain it. I think AI is good for confidence boosting, but it's bad for improving at the game. Because you don't actually get challenged by AI, and it's not going to really... If you're not getting challenged, you're not going to get better. Yeah, I, I found that lately. I, and I don't know if it's why, but I just started really playing last week. And, uh, I mean, I'm playing against, like, so many different... Like, I can't do anything with Terran. Like, I'll, 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 I have a game. Sure. Um, ready we can look at uh how do how does this work so just I... uh drag and so find it in your documents you can just like if you're using windows you can just like uh search it yeah i already have it. it okay i already have it open so just yeah. drag it and drop it into the discord channel we're talking in like the little private chat and then i can just click it and open it oh, up oh i see i see i see i see okay and then right. now i will open it and then and the top of this, you should be able to see right now, there should be like a watch button or like maybe you just already see it. Uh, you can watch my screen on StarCraft essentially. Okay. And then uh, now you can, if you are, you can see that like I'm loading up the replay. You can see my mouse yep. moving around mm -hmm. and shit. So yeah. you, you can actually see my perspective, which will make it easy for me to explain things to you. Yep. All right. Ugh. So I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. So let's see. So you're actually, I, I one of you was bronze, one of you is silver in this. But you're, are you silver right now? In the, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. So let's see what's going on for you. Okay. We're this this we're probably gonna talk a lot about things. Uh, just know before sure, I yeah, yeah. before I really get into it. Oh, I'm I'm gonna probably talk nonstop. So by all means, feel free to uh, interrupt me at any point in time. So that, you know, if you have a question and I'm in the middle of explaining something, definitely just interrupt me and ask. And I, I don't mind. It doesn't bother me. That way, I, okay. I'm going to make sure you get as much out of it as you can. Sure. Um, and yeah, let's fucking do it. Let's do it. So your first probe was timed well. First probe was timed really well. You, you made the probe within one second of the, or like within zero seconds of the game starting, like right when the game started. That's super fucking important. Because you want to make sure your Nexus has no idle time. If your Nexus has any idle time, it fucks you over so bad. Because this this Nexus, in general, is going to be making the majority of your probes. Out of every... Because you, you want to go to like 85 probes. And this Nexus itself is going to probably make like 40 of them. Or like maybe like 45 of them. Because it's the Nexus that's going to be alive the longest. So even though, let's say you're going to be making probes out of like 4 Nexus eventually... Your fourth Nexus might only be making like four probes or five probes. Because by the time you make it, it's already pretty much done. You're done probing. And now you're kind of just transferring probes around more or less. So every second you mess up like this, we'll see how long it lasts, right? But you just finished a probe and now you're not making a probe. This is a pretty big deal. Second thing is, is I against whatever race you're going for, or like, uh, they're, like so Protoss is kind of the weird race in the sense that your wall off kind of changes based on what race you're versing against. And just to make things super easy for you, this is what I recommend to everybody. Against Terran, I actually don't mind that you made the rally point of your Nexus towards your mineral line the entire time for your first probe. However, if this was Zerg, I would have preferred you to have made your rally point down to like right here with your very first probe. And when it spawns, it just spawns on because it spawns out of the side of the rally point. So if you spawn, if I could say you rallied here for Zerg, you would spawn there and you would cut off like two seconds of travel time to get there, essentially. And then if same thing with Protoss, instead of rallying here, like you would with Zerg, with Protoss, you would rally here because you'd want to wall the ramp for Protoss. You want to wall the natural doorway for Zerg. And for Terran, it's super easy. You can just leave it, like I said, at the mineral line and you can wall the back of the mineral line to the, to the wall itself. Like put a pylon there or something and put a gateway right above it. And that'd be totally fine. But just make sure 
your first probe you make is pretty much going to be grabbing a pylon. Because if you don't make a pylon soon, like you shouldn't be making one yet because you should be making a probe, but here pretty soon you should be making a pylon. Because we'll, we'll see how this continues to progress, right? But every second you miss like this starts to fuck you over. Okay, so that wasn't that bad. That was I, I, Go ahead, sorry. I missed it because of the... I, I typed GLHF and I was like, oh my god. Oh yeah, no, sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you, got the, you got the manners as a priority. You got, you got your priorities in order, dude. <laughs> yeah, but I, it, it's funny how that, that already messed me up like big time. It's, that was only one second. It's not that bad. I just wanted to make sure you understand that. Because uh, you didn't rally the Nexus, but again, this is Terran, so I'm actually okay with it. I just want to make sure you do oh. rally the Nexus against Protoss and Zerg. Because if you don't, okay. if you if you just leave it like this the entire time and you grab a probe off the middle line to go build a pylon down here, that's really bad. That's I a see. waste of time. Uh, but so far, you're doing okay. You've missed one second. Not that bad. Also, your gateway, really good job. Uh, most people don't pull the probe before the pylon's done. You did, though, so good shit. But you're not making a probe again. Okay, there we go. Not it's honestly not bad so far, not bad, but now it gets worse. <laughs> no, I know I, it's I 100%. I know, I know it will, it's all good. Uh, what you should be doing now, though, is as soon as you make the gateway, there's two things you need to be doing soon, like really quickly. When one is you chrono boost your nexus pretty fast now after you make your gateway and then make your probe, you chrono boost that probe right after, and you make your gas really shortly after that while also then making another probe. So you just want to maintain per production and make your gas with a, with one chrono boost. You chrono boost right. one time after the first pylon, that's it. But your scout is correct. This is good shit. Okay, so you made your gas. You So you actually have uh about every probe you've made, you've had like one second, no probe, and then it makes a probe again. And then you have like one second, no probe, you make a probe again. You're you're slowly adding up like missed nexus production time and it's definitely going to start hurting you in the long run uh like i said before because just every probe after this is going to be more and more and more delayed not that bad but uh definitely try to make sure you queue up another one right before it's done rather than doing it after it's done because you want to have no idle time at all that's so important to not have idle time Okay, you did that, that was perfect. The way you did it that time, this is also fine because you don't have the money to really spend right now. You're saving for a Nexus now at this point. You rallied to the gas. Which is good. Your build order is pretty correct right now with what you're doing here. Your scout. Uh, I would say, honestly, the fact that you scouted up the ramp, I'm okay with it. Not a big deal. But you don't even need to. Uh... So, like you can, like you totally can. It definitely is worth your while to see things, but the the reason why I'm kind of making it sound like you don't really need to scout is because in uh, uh, Silver League in general, you can honestly just scout the natural, and then if the guy didn't go for a fast expand, you can just go back to your base and build a shield battery, and then you, that you just add that into your build, and then you're good to go. You just do your build as is. You put no effort and distraction into scouting, really. So yeah, so um, the thing is, uh, I find that most of the time when I do scout, that most of them don't have a natural just because that's like, fine. They're a little late. Yeah. Uh, and and, and I, uh, but but it does take a lot of attention away from me because I start looking and then I I miss like the cyber core. So or all. the one thing about scouting is is everything that you're doing with Terran is the same costs as what it costs for you, and right now. And also, you have an advantage as Protoss in terms of minerals than over Terran. So, if you guys have the same cost of buildings, and you have the advantage of... There's two advantages you get. Number one is you can Chrono Boost your workers, and Terran can't do that. So, you can make more workers faster by, like... You'll have, like, one or two extra workers over Terran. Like, as you can see up here on the top, you already have two extra workers. Uh, because that Chrono Boost will help you get a little bit more out faster, which means you mine minerals a little quicker. But another advantage you have is that when you're building a building with Protoss... You just throw it down and you're done. And you can go back to mining minerals. Whereas Terran has to literally have the SCV off the mineral line the entire time building the building. So if your buildings all have equal resource costs and your workers have equal resource costs and the buildings themselves have like equal time cost of like the, the, the production, like everything's the same essentially. Like depot, barracks, command center, all this shit's the same. And the point I'm trying to make here is, is if you still can't afford your Nexus, he definitely cannot afford his command center yet. So it's okay if you scout his base and you go, oh, 
There's no next. There's no uh, natural there. I'll go home now. All it means is that he didn't go like CC first, and it's totally fine. It means that he might be doing a standard build just like you are, or he might, which will be a CC a little bit later, like after your scout leaves, or it'll mean that he's going for uh, some type of an all-in, which is also possible. It does not matter what kind it is. All you need to do to deal with it is you make a shield battery. You just mm -hmm. you, that, that, that's it. You don't even think about it at all. You don't give a shit. Because a battery mm. is such a small investment that it's not going to, like, make you overly defensive and, like, holy fuck, it's so expensive. It's nothing like that. But also, mm. if you get all-in, you'll have a shield battery that'll, if you're macroing, you will overpower his all-in. Especially if we're talking about server league. Because if you're flowing your build properly, you will just have a lot of shit. And you'll overpower him over time because you'll have more income and more production over time over him. Okay. So, as long as you, when, if you scout like this... As long as you aren't fucking your own build up, that's okay. But don't overthink it and be like, oh, what's going on? Yeah, normally I, I, that, that messes me up. <laughs> yeah, no, this is why... Now, I, now I'm, I'm trying to look around their base and I'm, I'm actually not doing anything at home. <laughs> no, exactly. This is, this is exactly why I, did, I told people in Silver League to literally not even scout. Like, you just scout the natural and you're done. That's it. Like, you just want to see if they expanded. And if they did, they did. If they didn't, build a fucking mm -hmm. your battery. Because like right uh, right now, you're everything's going I well. I should have for been you. building a nexus. <laughs> well, no, no, no. It's, you can't yet though. Oh, it's, I don't it, have it. Yeah, yeah. You're about to. But the one thing you are gonna fuck up here in a second if you don't fix it is your rally point of your nexus is gonna send another probe out here to go down to the natural. Yep. And you're gonna have two sitting there when it could be going to the gas. Yeah. Uh, and this, I mean, this just started, so we'll see how distracting this is for you. But. Yeah, like you always have to think the best way. Like I, we, I, I explain this more in the series too. If you continue to watch the the Beta Gym series, oh, but, I've already watched it all the way through. Oh, like nice. Twice. Okay. So, but yeah, like yeah. you, uh, scouting is always based off of what you have compared to what they have, because you'll you should actually start committing to memory. Like as you grow as a player, what things cost, and like for, for instance, something super basic. It, there's only one deviation, and I'll say what it is in a second here. But a, a pylon and a depot are both 100 minerals. A gateway and a racks are both 150 minerals. A nexus and a command center are both 400 minerals. And a SCV and a probe are both 50 minerals. Like, they're exactly the same. And the build times of the command center, of the ra of the gateway and the racks, and the nexus, all these things, they're the same exact thing. It's 71 seconds for a main base. It's 46 seconds for a racks or a gateway. The only deviation is that a pylon builds slightly faster than a depot. Because a pylon is 18 seconds and a depot is 21 seconds. But that's something you don't even really need to really think about because it's close enough and it doesn't really change shit, honestly. It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, so all you, gotta, all you gotta do is look at your build and go, he should have what I have. And if he does, which he did, nothing's weird. Because this is he, he, you have already passed by here, here, and here is exact same thing as here, here, and here. The de this is like the depot, this is the racks, and this is the refinery for Terran. It's exactly the same thing. So nothing fishy is going on right now. So you should definitely not overthink this. I get all in so a lot. <laughs> I'm always paranoid. Yeah. And see, this is where your build is starting to deviate because you're starting to think about it too much. You've just... So you should stop probing for a second at 20. Like 20 is when you want to throw down your Nexus. Like you want to you wanna actually like... Make sure you prioritize that first, right? And you could have if you didn't build your core. So you queued up more probes now and you started your core. And now your build order is super fucking awkward for you. Because here's the problem for you. When you're, when you're the one who is going to play defensive and you're going to macro up, your best advantage is more income. Because more income yeah. means more units. And more units mm -hmm. means you no know, micro, you win fights. Because you just you can literally just be like a fucking zombie and be like attack and then you just win the fight anyways. Uh, you don't gotta do fancy shit like you're you know bouncing off a fucking wall and doing a backflip and like doing yeah. you know flashy shit. It's just basic like a moving. But now automatically, as I was talking about before, with how your main nexus is gonna make probably like 40 probes out of your 80, your natural nexus is probably gonna make like 20 or like 25 probes out of your 80. And now that it's now every second that it gets more and more and more delayed is going to delay every probe you're going to be making. It's going to make yeah. your, your probe production is lopsided and it's going to just slow you down. So 
And yeah, this is all. F and then your probe dies too, right? Because it was attacking the racks, which now might make so, you even more paranoid. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, I, 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 okay, there you go. The double, the, the rally point thing. Um, yeah. The, the thing is, uh, when I saw no <clears throat> command center, I was like, ah, oh, freaking out. And that's why I built my core first. Usually, I build the nexus first. You should so always build it, the nexus first. Your, build, your build order okay. should never change. Like I'm okay, like I've okay. done so many coaching lessons too with people that think the exact same way you're thinking where they they always think this is this is a the biggest fallacy that everyone has in their mind and it's not true. Everyone goes, "Well, okay, vibes guide says to be greedy, right? But every time I, I try that, I die." And then now I get freaked out and whenever I see someone doing something that's not looking like it's going to be allowed for me to expand, I'm going to just improvise the build. I'm going to try and do things safer now, and I'm going to make sure I don't die. But really, the reason why you're dying is because your macro is slower. It's all it is. Because every if I was if this guy had two proxy racks right now, I would still go Nexus first. I don't even care. And like if I was doing Vita Gym series, I'd be like, well, we're doing the same fucking build every time, regardless of what he does. The only difference is, is I will make a shield battery a little faster if he is going all in. Like if, if rather, not, I don't even know if he's going all in. I'll make a shield battery a little faster if there's no natural, but if there is a natural, I'll make a shield battery a little later. Like, th here's the difference. You make a shield battery right after the core is done if there's no natural. If there is a natural, though, you make a shield battery like after the robo. And that's it. That's the only difference. And then everything else is exactly the same. So never deviate the build. Just do it the same way every time because okay. it's... What, again, like what I was saying before is what you just did here is you just you you now put yourself mm -hmm. further from a macro game and more into an all-in game yourself without really realizing it because you've ah. cut your economy down a little bit. It's not that bad yet. It's not like, oh my God, this is awful. It's just you've, if you could have been working at like 100% efficiency, now you're down to like 90% of what you could be because you've delayed mm -hmm. your Nexus. And this is shit that's really important because your Nexus should have gone down about 20 seconds ago. Yeah, that's big, yeah. Okay, and then you need to make sure you make that second gas. So your build order, I mean, I know that you're scouting and getting a little messed up here, but your build order should be every single time, pylon, gateway, gas, nexus, core, gas, pylon. So your gas is super late as well now. And now you're gonna have oversaturated probes and you're not making probes as well for a while here. That was, how much time was that? 10, 15 seconds. Yeah, that's a long time. Isn't yeah, it's a long time. Uh, 154 is when you stop making them, and then you don't make it again until 206. So yeah, that's 12 seconds of just idle nexus time. Yeah. That's definitely gonna. That's a full probe you're now behind forever, because uh, you don't get time back. And, and I'm still game. rallying to the other. Yeah, no, that's all good. So yeah, I, I feel like what your game play, your your game just fell apart with the scout. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and this is why I literally... No, it, normally, I don't do this. <laughs> yeah, well, this is also why I tell people not to scout in silver. Mm. I, I, I don't I don't like... In all the way... Like, in bronze, I don't even tell you to scout, period. And then in silver, I tell you to scout only the natural. In gold, I tell you to scout, like, the natural and maybe even poke the ramp and then leave. And then in platinum, I start oh, really telling you to, like, look yeah. through the base a bit more. Because in platinum, like, things should be a little bit more comfortable for you. Love you, Vine. Because uh, you've done it enough at that point where it's it's starting to become a little bit more muscle memory for you. Because it's the final league where it's like no micro. It, it's funny because I play so much team that I, I keep thinking I can do more than I can, uh, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, no, like t team games definitely gonna fuck you up, honestly. Because uh, that's how it's it started for me, right? I just playing team games, and then now I'm getting into the one v one, and I think I feel like that's kind of screwed me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, like well, t team games like there's just a different dynamic because there's so there's more of a of a urgency for map control in team games because there's the, the potential of multiple people all winning you and that can actually kill one person if no one else helps them uh it's it's hard sometimes to defend yourself versus multiple players the only way you really can is if you have a wall off but if, like let's say your teammates zerg and they get all in by two players they're probably just gonna die unless you help them so it's yeah. that creates a different kind of situation for you um but I feel like it's created some bad habits. Yeah, no, for sure, it's okay. Uh, you can you can definitely fix them. Uh, just yeah. the biggest thing is is make sure you definitely don't deviate from the from the, like the build. Don't from overthink build. it and don't over scout right now because if you mm -hmm. don't know how, for instance, 
this is the, the, the biggest thing, the biggest reason is if you don't know. So let me say it like this. There's two types of scouting. The first type of scouting is looking at something and going, that's what it is. And the second time of scouting is going, I know what your plan is without even fully seeing everything. So what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to become the kind of person that can scout by not having to see everything, but you can predict what's going to happen. And this is way more advanced. And it's it's something that is it's not actually it, like it, once you know it, it's actually not complicated at all. But like I'll give you an example of what I mean. Okay, check this out. This is this is what I mean. Uh, and I already kind of explained some of it as well with uh, the the whole point of saying what can you afford means what can they afford. That's the first part about it. So you like knowing right now you're like, well, there's no fucking way I can afford a natural yet. And I know I'm Perdos, which means I have a little bit more money than Taryn does. And all I have is a pylon gateway and a gas. He's got a depot, a racks, and a gas. So it's exactly the same thing. Now, here's a huge, huge, huge deal as well. So like you already know you're not going to all end. But now another really interesting thing to know that's way more advanced than Silver League. I don't, I'm not telling you to do this right now. I'm just, I'm just saying this is what you should be able to do in the future. You look at their gas and you calculate how much gas they've mined. And you go, oh, so his racks is about to be finished. And how do I know that? Even if I don't see it anymore. Because my gateway's done. So I automatically know his racks is going to be finishing any second now. And the only reason why his racks is very slightly behind my gateway is because either he fucked it up a little bit because maybe he built it a little bit like maybe I was really efficient with how I built it right after the pylon and he maybe waited for three seconds to build it after the depot was done. Also, a depot takes three seconds longer to build than a pylon. That's it. That's the only difference there. So he might like his rack should be finishing within a couple seconds of your gateway finishing and that's how it should be. But now if you can calculate how much if you know how much gas a gas starts with, which it's 2250 every single time. And you go, oh, well, his Rax is going to be finishing now, and he's only got 60 gas. If you know how much things in the game cost uh, in terms of gas, you know that this is not an all-in. There's no fucking way this is like a really fast factory. There's no way that this is going to be like uh, multiple racks with Reapers or something like that. At the most, this guy can afford one Reaper because he's got 60 gas, and a Reaper is 50 gas. A factory is 100 gas. And uh, like, if he was going to go for something like a fast factory or like two racks with a reaper he would have wanted to have taken this gas a lot earlier and this gas should say something like 2140 instead of 2190 if this was going to be something more aggressive and there's cost and effect for everything in the game so for instance if this did say 2140 right now and you were like oh fuck this guy took a gas really fast well the the co the, the effect is he gets more gas right but the cost of that would be he mined minerals for less amount of time because he took a gas earlier so now his mineral income fucking sucks like really bad. So now he, he puts him, himself in a situation where he has to do damage to you. Otherwise, he's so far behind because his mineral income is complete garbage. And mineral income is the only thing that matters in a macro game because everything that sets up your macro is 100% mineral cost for every race. And for you, for Protoss, it's pylons, nexus, and probes. Every one of those is mineral, 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 mineral. So the more minerals you have, the faster you, you can expand and the faster you can expand in turn, the faster you can then generate gas because you're not mining off of one or two gases. You're mining off of these gases and these gases and these gases because you have expansions to work with. And every time it grows, your army grows at a faster pace because you just can add more production and shit like that. So you will o always overpower your opponent if they're not macroing like you are and they're also not super fucking assertive with attacks. And it's really easy to make them not assertive, with the, not assertive with attacks in lower leagues if you uh, are making an army that's large for them to deal with because it actually becomes super complicated to break through an army if your macro is not perfect. So that that's kind of advanced, what I just said there. And it's something you should learn over time. And again, right now, if I asked you the cost of build time and the cost of resources for all these different types of things, I guarantee you're brand new to the game. You're going to be like, I have no fucking idea, dude. Like, I don't know. Well, it's what, it, you know, I, it makes no sense to me. But just in general, start trying to memorize how much does a Nexus cost? How much build time does it take for it to make a Nexus? It's the same every time. It's never going to change. And then do it with the gateway. Do it with a pylon. Do it with a, all your buildings. And you don't have to do it all in one day. Maybe like think about like one building a day or something like that. Do it. Pace yourself. It's totally fine. Just learn what shit costs. 
and then you'll start to realize every race has a lot of similarities. It's not like Terran is its own game and Protoss is its own game. There's so much overlap there, which is why if you have like a really good player who's like never off raced once in his life, but he's GM, he can automatically be like masters with the other off race because it's tons of tons and tons of similarities for every race for every race in the game. Uh, it's like listening to your videos again because it's the same. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it's uh, it's it's just trying to make sure you have the right idea and not distracting yourself in a way that's going to make exactly. you play like shit. Essentially, where you're like, ah, fuck, the game's no longer what I want. Because what you just did there is you just be, you just like fucked yourself over. You're actually like yeah, messing yourself up more than he is. Yeah, and and it's funny because I looked at the replay myself and I still didn't see. I wasn't as critical as, as this is. So this is great, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. And like right now, you're not making anything out of your, your uh, gateway and you haven't been doing it for a while. Uh, your stalker finished probably like 10 seconds ago. Okay, there we go. There's your sentry. And then uh, because your second gas was a bit delayed, you now are going to have a bit harder time getting down your robo yeah. and your second gate and all that shit. Exactly, so like things yeah. are just going to be delayed. And mm. if, because like, just like when you scouted, you don't have to think about shit, but if you saw, oh, okay, there's no natural really fast, even though there could be one now, which there very well could be, like that, it's totally fine. But if there was a chance that you didn't see a natural and you let your probe left and you already went back to go mine the base, just build a battery right when your, uh, your third pylon's done at your natural and you have the core done. So you could, like, be starting a, a battery, like, right there or something like, right now. And your units should be standing, not here, but there. You should be standing in front of the natural. And your units should not be scattered either. They should all be yeah. together, like with the battery in front of your natural. I think I should stop freaking out so much because I, I also got Reaper rushed. So I, I leave a stalker near the mineral line just because I'm scared. So that's time again. Okay. I want you to understand that if this guy was. So when you scouted him, he very, very realistically could have made a Reaper first. The chances of a Terran player attacking you with a Reaper below Platinum is like 2%, I would say. It's very fucking low. Uh,. Like most Terrans don't do it because they're just, they're also trying to be like, oh my God, if I do anything besides macro, I'm going to fuck my build up and I need to make sure I don't fuck my build up. I'm not, so like multitasking a Reaper to attack is definitely going to distract them as well, just like it distracts you. But uh, in general, if a Terran player was going to make a Reaper and then rally point it like to your base and go attack you right away, that Reaper would be coming out like, we'll go back to your gateway, okay? So... If you, this is something you should know for sure. If you go Nexus and then core, you make a stalker, you chrono boost that stalker. Ideally, right when it's done, this is a little, like probably like six seconds of waited time there. That's really bad for you. You want to make sure you're using your buildings like right away, right? But in general, a Reaper will be jumping into your base when your stalker is like that far along on the production bar. A Reaper will always get... If they go Reaper first and they attack you, a Reaper will always get into your base before your Stalker is out of your gateway. Every single time. And if it doesn't, it means they're either that your opponent is either very inefficient or they're very, just not doing it. They're just not even making a Reaper. And if they're very inefficient and your Stalker is down here, you could very easily run back and uh, move the Reaper. It's totally fine. Because you'll have, at that point, you'll also probably even have like your second... Uh, unit or even your third unit out of your gateway and you could easily just go back there and get rid of it in like one second because the, re the reaper is in your middle line for like four seconds while you go from here to here you're not going to lose every probe you're going to lose maybe one probe uh and if he fucks up his focus fire you might even lose zero so a, a cool thing you can do as well to make this easier for yourself as well is to go pylons one and two can be in your main base like they are pylon three can be in your natural and pylon four can be in the reaper jump spot because if the guy still waits even longer at that point and he waits until you have four pylons, you'll be able to see the Reaper jumping past your pylon. And that's another warning. But a Reaper isn't really that scary. It's really not. Uh, it's only scary right off the bat, like right now. And it should be in your base as your first stalker spawns. And then if it does, you just go, hey, stalker, aim move towards the Reaper. And just let it be. Just let it just do its thing. Don't even, do not stare at it. Do not try to like stutter step it and all, do all this micro shit. Make sure you're like, the second you say, hey, stalker, attack the Reaper. You can, you can get confirmation that it's happening because you can hear shots. As long as you play a sound, you can be like, you hear the, sh the stalker shot going off. And you're like, yeah, it's shooting at something. So must be the Reaper. 
and you can maybe see it as well on your screen wh while you're doing things like making probes, chrono boosting your nexus, shit like that. Um, another thing you did too that or you didn't do yet is when you make your chrono boost on your stalker with your second pylon. That is correct, but you need to pair that with chrono boosting your nexus for more probes again. Probes is like the thing you need to babysit the hardest for this shit to work properly. And you're not chrono boosting your nexus. Also, you stop. Yeah, I'm really bad again. at that. Yeah. That's good. That's gonna be the thing that holds you back the most, honestly. Okay. So ignite your chrono, boost, chrono boosting again, and now you have three chronos available. Okay, you chrono boosted once there. That's good, but you could be like, and this is again another situation where if you have two chrono boosts just sitting there, you could be like four more probes again ahead of where you are right now because of just that. That's just that only. Yeah. That's not even including the time when you have like those idle moments on the Nexus. That one moment where you had 12 seconds of idle time. Like you are actually right now probably like five probes behind or like six probes behind where you could be right now. Mm, okay. Yeah. Just put a pile in there for sure. And definitely want your army in the front. Yeah, your third base timing. I love it. Really good. Uh, make sure you make an immortal uh, as well as soon as possible. So there's one more thing you messed up here that is really, really, really important. This will change your life against all ends. Okay. The way uh, we're this is really, really important. Let's go back and talk about this really fast. Is it the walling? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay. it's your it's your production of unit uh, and like what you prioritized. So, this is huge. When your core is done, make your warp gate as fast as you can. It's really important to not fuck that up. And the reason... That this is the only part of it. This is the second part to this. The reason why not uh, missing your warp gate is really important is because a stalker's build time is 30 seconds on the gateway itself. But when you get warp gate and it turns into a warp gate, the stalker's build time becomes 23 seconds instead of 30. So, you actually get stalkers at a faster pace throughout the rest of the game. And this happens to every unit on the gateway. They're like, their build time gets reduced by like 25% or something like that. It's like, it just lowers the cooldown, which is fucking crazy. Uh, and then you also, the other bonus is obviously you get it right away rather than having to wait for it to build because you just warp it in. Um, now, also, now, that's, that's huge for that. But when you start warp gate and then you start making a stalker and then you make a sentry, and then after you're making the sentry, then you add on the robo and the gateway. If you understand that a gateway's build time is 46 seconds, and you understand that a warp gate's research time is 100 seconds, these are important numbers to know once you get better at macro because you want to pair things up better. You want to you make things make sense with your build. And the thing you should be aiming for is you want your, warp, your second gateway to not actually be up and then making units, you want it to be up as your warp gate finishes. That's the idea. So you, the, the way it's supposed to go is like this. You make three units out of your gateway, your first gateway, before, like, while warp gate's being researched, you make one, two, three. So you make stalker, sentry, stalker, and then warp gate's going to be done right after that. So you do not make a fourth unit out of this gateway. Like, normally, you warp in the fourth unit. Now, when you warp in the fourth unit, you're pairing that with warping in your first unit out of your second gateway. So you do not make a unit out of your second gateway at all. Because if you do that, you're going to fucking delay your warp gate because it's going to finish while you're producing a stalker. And it doesn't just turn into a warp gate if it's currently building a stalker. It has to wait until it's done to then turn into a warp gate, which wastes your time because you're not getting the advanced cooldown of how long you have to make a stalker for. So that's huge. You don't want to fuck that up because that's, that's a permanent buff for your gateway for the rest of the game where every single stalker comes out faster. So you don't want to waste that time at all. Now, gotcha. the way it goes, it's like I said before, you make three out of this one, and then it becomes a warp gate. You wait until your warp gate's done in your natural gateway, which means you're going to be making it roughly around halfway into warp gate, because that's 46 seconds to build a gateway. So if you make it around 50 seconds into the production of a 100 second timer, your warp gate and your second gateway are going to be like turning into warp, like all of it's going to finish at like the same time pretty much. But you prioritize your immortal first out of your robo, and you didn't do that. You made a second stalker while you delayed warp gate. You'll, you'll see in a second here. So if we speed it up, now to where we just were, and your warp gate was a bit delayed, uh, it slows things down. So now you can see your warp, your gateway's in production for 13 seconds, and your warp gate's only 52 seconds in production right now. 
So that means that you took the second gateway at 39 seconds of production. So this isn't a, this is not a problem with your gateway being too early. It's a problem with your warp gate being too late. If your gateway is 13 seconds in production, your warp gate research right now should be probably around like 60 plus, like 62 or some shit like that, uh, like roughly. So that way it would be pairing out better. But now if we go even further forward, you can see when the gateway is done, you now start a stalker and now warp gate's gonna finish right oh, okay. now and you still don't have a warp gate. Mm. So now you have to wait for this to just finish. Mm. So it's mm. wasted, like if you were to get all in right now, this is going to weaken you in so many different ways because, number one, you could have a stalker immediately and you don't. You have to wait for it to pop out. Number two, mm -hmm. again, like I said before, the, the whole point of the fact that it goes from 30 seconds to 23 seconds is going to make every stalker after that come out faster. And now that process is being delayed. And then on top mm -hmm. of that, if you just prioritize the robo while this turned into a warp gate, you'd have a, a mortal that's probably like 5 to 10 seconds already in production which means the immortal would be coming out faster to then pair with your warped in stalkers. It will give gotcha. you more power overall by a lot. Because mm. how long? Okay. How long? Does, I want to see how long your robo is up for, and you don't make a unit. This is really important. This this unit, the ro the immortal, is the best unit you're gonna have as well yeah. when you get all in. It is by far your strongest unit. So it finishes at 402. Let's see how long you wait until you make an immortal. <laughs> Damn. You waited uh, 20, basically like 21 seconds, because I'll, I'll give you that. That's like 0.9 of a second right now. I, we'll just say 21 seconds. Uh, that's a long time. <laughs> so, that yeah, that's fucking huge. That's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's almost the build, like, that's like half the build time of the Immortal, essentially, is just not out now. So this thing could be like already like halfway done. And if this guy was going to be like walking across the map right now with an all in for real, Having this immortal out a little bit faster would make your life a lot easier. Also, your battery is really, really, really late, regardless of anything. If if this guy was to be going for a no natural opener, like I said before, you want to make the battery after the core at your natural. And if he is going for a natural, make the battery anyways. After you can just make it anyways after the robo, just to be just to be on the safe side, and that'll give you peace of mind because that battery is so fucking overpowered if you combine that with a battery overcharge from your nexus like it just is insane it, it makes it'll make one immortal feel like you have five immortals because it just won't fucking die and it will just be up forever just killing shit um so that would be a huge deal like so if you're struggling to deal with all ends and you just don't make batteries that's a big deal and don't make multiple batteries do not make do not ever make multiple batteries ever that's the only time you should ever worry about making multiple batteries is when you're like Diamond Plus. Seriously. If you're Platinum mm -hmm. or below, never do it. I see mm -hmm. so many people do this where they're like making five fucking batteries. And they're like, but I need them. No, no, you don't. You need more units is what you need. Not five batteries. Battery Stop. overcharge is more than enough. That, that is such a good ability. Yeah, then you're not making probes again right now, right? This is brutal for you. Uh, for a long time here. So your build is definitely starting to fall apart here. So I would say you need to make sure as well. You're, this is a long time to not make probes. Make sure that you're uh, really putting a massive effort in into rotating one two one two one two one two. Like we're talking every series, like every, within once every five seconds. Like you need to be doing it a lot because. Right now, this is this is already like proving that you don't have enough muscle memory to make workers, and the it, you need to really make an effort to develop muscle memory because all that's going to happen to you, and this happens to everybody, is the more tasks you start to pile on top of yourself because the more you expand, the more units you start to make, the more your supply grows, the bigger your base becomes. You start adding on more and more and more shit you got to worry about. But if you can't have muscle memory to just remember to make probes regardless every time this happens, your probe count will always fall apart. Like your, your probe production will always fall apart. And this is going to lose you games every fucking time. So you have to, even though right now it's definitely not going to be a habit you're going to have, but you need to create it to be a habit. You need to be hitting... One, two, one, two. Do it every five. Like, literally put a fucking, uh, like, a alarm clock next to you or some shit. Or, like, a beeper. I don't know. Like, anything that makes it work for you. Like, uh, 
just try to remember if you're not doing it once every five seconds, you're fucking up. Like if you should feel like you're losing the game. And it when you get really good at it, you might be doing it once every like two seconds or three seconds, like even faster. Just be, just because like you sh you there's no reason to not cycle your fingers on the keyboard. Mm -hmm. uh, and then your eyeballs should be also looking at the bottom middle a lot. Like, because again, all you got to look at is you got to see, is there a box in the Nexus? And am I good to go here? And then... Yeah, I, I tend to do that more. I don't know why this game... Uh, no, maybe it, it's, it's okay. It, I mean, it happens. It's totally fine. I'm just really yeah, being yeah, hard yeah. on you because this is this is something oh, that yeah, you, yeah. Need to, you need to always do forever. Yeah, it never stops. Yeah. And it only gets harder to do this when you actually start microing. Like, once you get to, like, Diamond. Because you have to start remembering... Like you, you need to get to a point where you can actually just feel. You don't even. I don't like. For this is how I am. Let me explain how I am. Okay. Okay. This, this is where you kind of need to become yourself. I can actually go like if I was you right now, I could be like one probe, probe, and then two make a uh, stalker and immortal, and I can remember internally to a decent degree, roughly a twelve second timer for the probe, a twenty three second timer for the stalker. And a 39 second timer for the immortal. But I, and it's not even just one time, it's balancing it repeatedly. And it gets confusing when it becomes your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth, because suddenly it's like, okay, well, I've made uh, five probes, which is now 60 seconds. And I've made two immortals, which is now 78 seconds. And then I've made three stalkers, which is seven, or 69 seconds. And you're just like, you're constantly like rotating it back and forth. But it's like these tasks that you just remember, like every time you hit the the probe button you remember i have 12 seconds because this is this is why build timer like actually knowing what a build timer means means so much because if i ask you okay how much does how much time does it take to make a zealot you're probably gonna be like i have no fucking clue <coughs> excuse me sorry <coughs> sorry um but yeah if you if you say i don't know how long it takes to build a zealot that's fine that i get your silver you have a lot of room to grow it's totally okay but you should start to learn these things because if you're if it's something that you use a lot, but you have no fucking clue what numbers mean, it's gonna be confusing as shit. You're gonna be like, oh, what? Like, imagine imagine if you didn't know what money meant. Imagine if you had no idea what a hundred dollar bill was or like a ten dollar bill, and someone you buy something from like a restaurant and they go, that'll be fifty two fifty, and you look at your wallet and you're like, what the fuck is fifty two fifty? I don't know how to read numbers. Like this doesn't mean anything to me. You just drop it all on the table and you drop like four hundred dollars on the table and you're like, is that right? Like, no, okay, that's a little bit much. It's the same thing yeah. in StarCraft. If you don't know what build times of things are, you're going to have no idea what macro cycles mean. You're going to be like, well, I don't know, just every once in a while, right? I guess that works. You're going to, like, underdo it like crazy because you're going to get... Gotcha. You're just not going to fucking pay attention to it enough. So totally. okay. it's it's something that you should definitely try to, like, start building internal timers in your mind with. But in the, in the way that you do that, the way you start really learning it is that's two ways the first one is what i just said where you try to actually start to learn what the number means oh this the stalker means 23 23 seconds cool i know that a 12 means uh sorry a probe means 12 cool i know that now if you learn the number that's half of it the other half of it is building muscle memory in your hand by going one two one two one two one two and you just check it repeatedly and you'll start to realize okay a probe is definitely a lot faster than a stalker because I check it repeatedly and I have to keep maintaining maintenancing probes way fucking up more often than stalkers. So now that reinforces my understanding of how often I need to do this. I need to do immortals uh, way less often than stalkers. It reinforces how often you do these things. And it starts to just really make you crisp at your macro. So you again, it's it's like it's it's um, it's a it's a mandatory non optional thing you have to do. It's. It, it is rough for people to start it off, but once you get to a point where you do it, you've done it for like a couple months, it starts to just click and you're like suddenly, wow, I just got platinum in fucking no time flat. Like platinum is now easy for me because I can actually macro. Do you, do you suggest to do that more in live games or? 100% yeah. Get it? Okay. Like you should be doing it forever. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I still do it myself and I am a GM player. Like, and the reason why is because I cannot stand doing nothing. I actually can't stand just letting my hands off the keyboard and just sitting there and like put my hands on my waist or whatever and just being like, all right, let's, uh, let's wait for a bit. <laughs> like there's, just know that StarCraft 2 is a game that is uncapped in terms of how efficient you can be. 
It literally, there is not a single person who will ever be able to play this game perfectly in our entire lifetime. No one, the, the only way someone could ever potentially play StarCraft 2 perfectly, or a game like StarCraft 2 perfectly, would be if someone reinvented the computer and you could somehow control like 2,000 units, or like, or like or not 2,000 units, like have 2,000 APM all at the same time. Like if you could just control, like, cause again, like think, think about this for a second. There is so much going on in StarCraft. Imagine if, for instance, every probe you made was never all delayed. And every time you mined a patch, it was perfectly done. Like you always got to the, you always went to the perfect patch you should be going to first. And you always made sure it was perfectly done. And every probe never got some shit mining time going on. And then imagine every time you made a stalker, this is Terran versus Perdos. So imagine every time you made a stalker, every single stalker you had would go and fight the Terran until it lost its shields. And then it would retreat and regenerate shields and then do it again. And you would never take real damage on stalkers. But you would make sure you maximize damage with losing shields and just keep doing it repeatedly over and over and over and over and over. And same thing with the Immortals. And same thing with your Sentry. Imagine if every single scout was perfect because you never wasted a second scouting every inch of the map. And, like, it just never stopped. What if you could do every fucking unit perfectly the entire time? Nobody can. But what you can do is you can strive to get more and more towards something like that, which means you need to have a rhythm in your hand when you play this game with, like, your mouse and your keyboard. And it needs to be something that flows, that feels like you're making progress every single second of the game. There is always something that you can be doing regardless of time. There's never a moment in StarCraft 2 where you can genuinely just not do anything. Because if you ever think there is, it means you're falling behind. Because there is something you could have been doing. Like in the start of the game, it's stacking your close patches. Later on, it's macroing perfectly. And after that, it's multitasking perfectly. So it, it, ne it literally never ends. So right here, this would be a moment where uh, it's okay that you just lost probes. It really is. You just lost nine probes. That's not a big deal. If I, if, if I were playing this, I would not give a shit about losing nine probes. But the problem for you, though, is not that you just lost nine probes. It's that you're not making probes as fast as you could be. Because remember how earlier when I was like, you're probably like six probes behind where you could have been right now. There were, there were moments, again, we saw over the past couple minutes where you didn't make probes for a long time. And you also have not spent Chrono Boost for a long time. You have a ton of chrono energy. You have three chronos on the main and two chronos on the natural. That's a fuckload of probes right there. Your probe count should have been like 55 by now. Or like 52, something like that. And losing nine probes off of that could take you down to like 43, 44, 45. And you'd still have a shitload of probes. But you just aren't making them as fast as you should be. So now things like this feel more damaging than they really should be. And then, like for instance, here's another example, right? You're just not, you're not maintaining, you're not maintaining production as much as you should be, because like like we said before, your first Robo Immortal, 21 seconds, was how long it took your Robo to be done to then make the Immortal, right? 501 was when this last one finished. How much time goes by before you make a second unit out of this Robo? Like this shit is what you have to keep on top of. Because I think I'm just trying to rebuild probes and I'm freaking out. No, for sure. Where is that? Where is that meta pack? <laughs> for sure. And you you waited for a minute and six or like a minute and seven seconds to make your second immortal. Yeah. Like this is such a long time. You could have made almost like with a chrono boost, you could have made two immortals in that in that time frame. Mm. But realistically, that's like one and a half because two immortals is like eighty seconds, and this was about sixty. So. That's fucking huge. You'd, you'd already have a second yeah, immortal yeah. out right now, and your third immortal would be, like, halfway done already. Uh, and, it, again, what if this guy showed up with, like, a bunch of tanks and, like, marauders and marines, and he pushed you? Like, and the well, thing, that's, that's what happens. Well, for sure. And the, here's the thing, too, right? Even though you're... Ma and this is why macro is god. It's, it's literally, like, the king golden rule in everything that platinum and below. Because even though you're making... We're, like, we're only talking about you, right? We're talking about how you... Could have been making probes faster. We're talking about how you could have made your warp gate faster. All the all these things we've talked about so far. And yet, you also still even lost nine probes. And you're still maintaining a 14 supply lead. Like, you're still ahead of your opponent. Even though your build is getting pretty fucked up here. 
Imagine if your build wasn't fucked up and you had like 100 supply right now. And you had like, again, after, even after losing 9 probes and you're back up to now 47, what if you had like 65 or like back up to now like almost 70? Or Because again, you're, you have actually lost more probes by not building them than what Terran killed so far this game. Which is fucking crazy for you. Because that this is just something that people just don't see when they play StarCraft. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, I lost nine, though. It's not that bad. I'm still ahead, right? But you're so far behind where you could be if you didn't fuck up how you made them. I am here in the shadows. I'm like, right now? So have you ever heard... Uh, did you hear about me talk about something called the two-minute rule at all before? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, every two minutes make yeah. a new base. Yep, so you're a little bit behind on that one, too, now. Uh, I'm always behind on this one. Yeah. I don't know why. Because I think initially I'm be behind making probes. So at four minutes, my my line is not even saturated. So yeah. then I just wait. And like, yeah, well, for sure. Like, look right here, right? This, you're doing it again right now. Again, uh, this is just, it's not enough urge. It's, it's not enough repetitiveness. So a lot of people, there's two ways people macro, okay? One is people do it in waves. And one is people do it consistently. Right now, you're you're starting to become the wave kind of a player. To like you're you're like I wouldn't say you're fully that. Uh, you're if, I can't really. You've only like fully queued up your nexus like one time so far that I've seen, which was not. You should never do that. That's really bad habit because of what that encourages yeah. you to do is it encourages you to macro really fucking hard for like one second and then forget about it for a minute. That's really bad mm -hmm. habit to develop. Mm -hmm. Do not ever fucking do that. Okay. Uh, because it makes you lazy. But if you. Uh, well, like what happens here though is you queued up five or you have five queued up right now You can tell because of the five white boxes in the Nexus mm -hmm. and then they finish And then like right now this Nexus at like 618 or so stops Shadow. This Nexus at like 623 stops and this Nexus at like 624 or 625 stops and then it just stops for a while and That is a fucking clear sign that you're not cycling your macro repeatedly because if you're check if you're checking it, this this guarantees that you're not at least checking it once every twelve seconds, and once every twelve seconds is really fucking slow. That's that that is like an F. I would give you an F for that. Like if I if, if I was grading your macro, you get a fucking fail for not checking it at least once every twelve seconds. But what you should like what I would give like a letter grade for like an A, it should be once every five within once every five seconds, and like if like an A plus would be like once every three seconds, and what that means is. Is the, the the if you remember, and be to gym, I'll say it again right now. The perfect way to macro cycle your nexus is to maintain two white boxes per nexus. So when you check it, if there are two, you're good. Check it again in a second. Check check it again three seconds later or five seconds later. Check it again. Check it again. As soon as you see one, tap tap tap. You just make three more probes. Now you have two. Check it again five seconds later. Check it again five seconds later. Check it again. Oh, there's one again. Tap tap tap. So you always have at least one probe being cycled in the production and you queue one up only while the first one's being maintained. That's all you're doing. And you're not ever doing it by clicking the Nexus and looking at the actual probe itself inside the build time. So you, you actually don't know the build time of it. Or if you're not looking at and paying attention to the top of the Nexus where the probes build timer like goes above it like that. If you're not paying attention to that either, that's totally fine. As long as you can maintain one in queue, you're good to go. You're doing a wonderful job because you... The reason why it's totally fine to do it is because you have plenty of money to afford that. Because it's, you're literally, it's, it's, yeah. or, go, go ahead, sorry. No, it's just crazy how you think you're being kind of efficient and you're not at all. Oh, that's for sure. I, I kept thinking I was like, oh, I'm building the probes. I'm I'm going for it. And and it, yeah, I lo overload it and, and I just forget about it. Yeah, no, that's, that's how it goes. It's because yeah. people just okay. don't have the habits enough. They don't have, like, again, try to feel, like you should, you should genuinely make this like a uh, like a a rule for yourself, which is if I'm not checking, if I'm not cycling one two, one two, one two, within every five seconds of each other. Like like every uh, sorry, what I, I said that weird. Every five seconds you need to cycle that one two. Five seconds later, right. one two. That that's what you should be doing. If you're not doing that, you should feel like you're failing and you're like not doing it correctly. And it doesn't have to be that way the entire game, in terms of one two. But what will happen though later on is later on you'll be cycling whatever your production groups are. I don't, some people like to make their robo and other like stargates or whatever on different control groups, which is that's your choice if you want to do that yourself. I would recommend you just put it all in one control group to make it really easy. But you should be going at least two every like five seconds once your 
done making probes. So the only time you can cut out one out of your cycles is when you have 80 probes. When you mouse over top right over here and you go, all right, in top right, I can see I have 30 supply in army and I have 52 supply in probe. So that means I'm not at 80 to 85. So I need to keep cycling one, two, one, two, one, two. Another indicator is when your fourth base has become fully saturated, you're going to be around 80 because it's about 20 probes. It's 22 exactly. So 22 probes per base, which means if, you're, if your fourth base has most of its saturation there, because if it was fully, it would be 88. 88 even okay-ish. That's fine. But as long as you're 80 plus, you're then able to go, okay, I can finally stop worrying about the probes. And that should be happening around seven minutes. Like seven minutes to like 7.30. Oh, and if you're not even yeah. close by like 7.30, there's a fucking problem with your What's uptime up of your probes. It means you're super delayed on it. Uh, things are going wrong for you. And then he pushes you. And now, when he pushes you, you guys have equal supply. So you actually were ahead earlier by like 16 supply or something like that. And now you've actually evened out. And your probe count hasn't really gone up much either for a while. You also did, I think, just ate like a pretty big supply block for a moment there. But this is definitely not ideal for either one of you. Neither one of you is really macroing that efficient. So this is going to be a, way, a, a lot more complicated than it has to be. Because... Yeah, you're not you're you're still under 100 supply by seven and a half minutes when you should like this in 99 should represent almost your entire probe count. Like if, if for instance, if you had 85 probes, you could have seven stalkers with your current supply and that'd be your whole army because you'd have 85 probes and that you'd have the same supply as what it is here is it, 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 it. Yeah, it's like 99 is very fucking low for 730. And then you push into him and he actually overpowers you because you just don't have enough, right? So, yeah. Uh, brutal. Another, another thing, too, to keep in mind is uh, as soon as you start your... So this is the way your build should be going. You expand every two minutes. <coughs> so your third base is going down by four minutes. Your fourth base is going down by six minutes. At that moment, when you take your fourth base, you should be taking your upgrades as well and at that moment when you start these buildings you should stop making stalkers and start making zealots and then at that moment as well when these buildings are done you should pretty much stop chrono boosting probes you should be chrono boosting probes though like this next hasn't done shit for chrono forever but like if you were chrono boosting probes throughout this game you should be around 70 probes at that point when, when these buildings finish, that is, because again, you, you start you start these after the fourth base, okay? Remember that. That's really important to know that. You always start your council and your forge after you make the fourth nexus. And then when these buildings are done, you start chrono boosting these buildings instead of probes. Because your probe chrono boost production oh, should basically yeah. be done. You should already be really close to the probe ideal probe saturation that you're uh, looking for. And then you can finish off the last few probes that you need with no chrono boost anymore. Because if you did chrono boost it, you'd probably make them too fast. And you have a chrono boost that's just sitting there doing nothing because you're already done making probes. Because you'll be like in the 70 plus range and all you need to go to is 80. And if you're making four at a time, it'll go really fucking fast. Um, so then at that point, you'd be making charge. And you'd be making a weapon upgrade. And you'd be chrono boosting these two buildings together. So your, your zealots that you start making now are going to turn into charge lots here pretty soon. Right, and charge right. lots are going to be a lot stronger against an army like this than stalkers are. The only reason why you would ever continue to make stalkers would be if you made a... Uh, or if your opponent was going for, like, banshees or a battlecruiser or just air, essentially. And you were like, okay, I need air units. I need an I need anti-air units. So zealots don't hit air. Uh, and then after, as soon as you also start chrono boosting your charge, like, once this building's done and you go charge, chrono boost, immediately make a Templar Archives. Right after that, too. So you can start immediately adding in Archons as soon as that's done. And you can start going into Charge Lot Archon Immortal. That That is a good way to do it. Just to make it easy for you. And here's the thing. Even if you don't do that right now, 
That's I would say this is a genuine statement. You don't even need to go charge the Archon Immortal until Platinum. You could honestly go. I just want you to know that it's still possible to genuinely win every pretty much every game you're going to play if your macro is great with just Stalker Immortal and like an Observer. And if that's all you have in Silver and even Gold League. And, the, the, and the, it would have won this fight just now too. But the only reason why it didn't is because your supply was actually really fucking low to what it should have been. It's, you're, you should have had like twice the army size that you did. Because you should have had like a lot more economy than you did for a lot longer. Which would have gave, given you a lot more money and your build would have just been at a faster pace. So, so far, mm. does that make sense for everything we just said? Yeah, yeah, no, no, totally it does. Any questions about things? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I mean, I get the, I just, I just need to work on the early game macro stuff a lot harder. Yeah. Uh, because I, I, I think lately I've gotten a lot of uh, all ins and and I, I start freaking out, uh, and then I, I just completely lose sight of like even from that scout I'm already no hundred like, percent down. Yeah. You're, yep, <laughs> for sure. Um, I guess a, a question would be, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, obviously practice that, um, but like in terms of coaching, um, how often would you say would be a good idea for somebody that that's starting out? I, okay. So this is my, I, I've, I've given this disclaimer many times and, uh, I'll, I'll give it to you the exact same way I've given it before, but I would say mm -hmm. if you're somebody who wants coaching, it's definitely going to cut down the amount of time you need to research yourself about things no matter what league you're in but i think so like it, it could you could argue that it could always be worth it no matter what but i do think you can honestly do it yourself if you really want to and you're motivated enough until you get to diamond league like you know i don't actually think you really need coaching from bronze silver gold or plat if you're willing to make the effort to research and like really pay attention to things like timers because that's the biggest thing everyone fucks up and that's the exact reason why in the intro to the beta gym series I did, I explained what was the notepad trick. It's so fucking important because people don't realize how far behind they really are. Because all this is the biggest common problem everybody has when they don't understand StarCraft. If you don't know what an efficient build looks like, you only have one thing you can base it off then, which is your opponent. And if you're ahead of your opponent, everyone always thinks, well, I'm playing better than him though, so I must be playing well. And your opponent might be playing like absolute dog shit. So that's not a good sign. That's uh, you could be, you could be playing like dog shit plus one, right? Like it's not actually good. So as long as you know how to pay attention to timers. And again, that's why I explained it in the opener to BGM. It's like the first video on my YouTube channel. Uh, that is something that if you apply it to your own personal research and studying of your own gameplay, you could be like, okay, yeah, no, I'm so far behind here and I'm falling off at four minutes why am i falling off at four minutes or why am i falling off at three minutes and then you could be like what did i do at three minutes and like for instance this game you could be like oh fuck i scouted and then everything's falling apart and then you know for instance for like scouting like we said before you don't even really need to worry about it until you're platinum honestly like it's so basic until then uh and even in platinum it's not even a big deal it's very, it's like little it's just trying to now start understanding what composition even means like what does that word even mean in starcraft like, how does that affect you? But, like, for now, it's such a waste of your time. Because every single thing you think about that is above your current level of, like, skill yeah, yeah. means you just don't macro, right? You don't do the five-second cycles, and you don't do the th the basics that are what's mandatory to get there. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I hear you. Because a lot of times um, I, I get frustrated because, you know, I'm trying to, to get the, the micro macro better. Yeah. And, and then I get attacked, you know, like dropped uh, or or some kind of you know for sure you know speed thing run by or you know whatever and and then i'm like that game essentially i've just completely stopped yeah. learning anything because i'm just freaking out of trying to for sure. deal with the fight and then i lose and then i do it again and then you know i think it was like eight games in a row where it was like like i couldn't even get to my third base yeah uh before i got attacked so i was just like okay i need i need to hear this yeah um, so I, I would say uh, in general too, just to elaborate a little bit, just a tiny bit more on that, uh, mm -hmm. like the, the detail of coaching and stuff, uh, the, the game itself going from bronze to platinum is honestly like a tutorial in my opinion. 
it's it's just like learning the basics of the game it's like learning how to set up the game and it's not like starcraft 2 is a very hard game so even though i would reference it as like oh this is like your tutorial to how to play the game it's still a difficult tutorial because this game is really fucking consuming it's really hard it takes a lot to do it but then once you get to diamond plus there is it's it like imagine if like you had to walk up like a little tiny like like three steps on a staircase you're like okay i just walked up three steps and i've made it that's learning how to macro but now you look forward and there's like a fucking pyramid with like five thousand steps and you're like okay what the fuck is that and that it, pyramid's called multitasking multitasking is exponentially harder by a million times over than micro than macro is and when yeah. you have to start doing multitasking that is when you need coaching i would say like if you really want to like figure shit out that's when coaching can be very elaborate and very like mm -hmm. very specific to what you need as to, like whatever your style is and shit like that because it's it's just a way hard it's like a different game entirely so, once you get so there. basically the the most efficient would be uh you sort of come back to you when I, I feel like I've gotten my macro tight. I yeah, that's what I would say. I would yeah. say you're gonna get the mm -hmm. most out of coaching if you come back to me when you're like starting to multitask. Uh, if you want to like, if cause, like if 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 you're or willing just to, to check put in, in the, and yeah, see yeah, how, yeah. how my macro is going. If you're willing to put in the effort and you feel like things are clicking for you, that would be when I would recommend you're gonna get the most out of coaching. But if you're like if you're getting stuck at some point and you're like fuck, okay, I'm stuck in like gold one and I just what the hell is going wrong with my gameplay now? I just, I can't figure it out. I'm st I like have a roadblock and I need someone else's perspective. Obviously, I, by all means, I'm more than willing to help you with coaching. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's totally fine. But mm -hmm. I would say it's probably better for you if you figure it out yourself because it's going to make you think about the game better. It's actually a good thing to figure out your own problems and overcome them than have someone always tell you, in my opinion, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it actually makes you critically think about the game more. So, Absolutely. yeah, so like if you can actually consume the info in the videos of like B2GM, which is it's like reference guides. But if you can consume that and apply it to your own gameplay and actually overcome your own problems, you will only be a stronger player for that. Great. Awesome. So, yeah, I, I would say definitely try. And then if, if, it's, if it just isn't working, you're getting frustrated. I'm always obviously there to help you. Yeah, I mean, if I run into a wall for a while, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. But, you know, I, I was just I think I just needed to hear this because. Yeah. It's one thing listening to your videos because no one t tells you stuff, so you're just kind of okay. Uh, and then you, you know, you kind of have a select selective hearing sometimes. Yeah, for sure. So when you're talking to to the to the coach, I mean, it's just telling you straight up. Oh, and definitely. I see that yeah. now. It's so, definitely yeah. going to save you time for sure because I'll actually like pinpoint your problems for you and I'll really allocate it towards you specifically. Awesome. All right, man. That's great. Yeah, I know exactly what to do now. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Well, I will, uh, if you want to listen to this again in the future, I'll make it really easy for you because I'm going to edit this later tonight. I'm going to upload it and then I'll send it. I'll actually message you in Discord uh, where we just talked just a second ago. Um, I'll have it like the link of the video there. I'll post it to you and you can just rewatch this whenever you want. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Vibe. All right, man. Well, have a good rest of your day and thank you for doing right, coaching. Listen. All right. Take it thank easy, man. Thank you. See ya. Okay. Bye. All right, guys, that has been a coaching lesson with uh, our boy, Space Pants. Thank you, Space Pants, for doing the lesson, dude. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the next video, whatever that might be, as always. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, good luck in your games. Later.